What's up, displayers? It's almost time for the weekend. You know, everyone's always like, TGIF and Fry, yay! And I think it's time we acknowledge those professions where Friday isn't necessarily a good thing. So, in honor of those who work weekends, and shout yourselves out in the chat, please, the servers and the bartenders, the DJs and the rideshare drivers, the grocery and retail workers, the doctors and nurses, the courier who will bring me my Amazon package tomorrow. Screw you, Friday, you're just a regular day, you hear? You're like the child who everyone praised their entire life but didn't actually earn it. Take your big ol' ego and get right-sized, you overhyped day of the week. I'm throwing my pair of undies with your name on it in the garbage in solidarity with my working weekend warriors. Wait, does that mean that I also have to throw out Saturday and Sunday? Because then I'll only have four pairs left and I really hate doing laundry. Okay, I'm not really sure how I'm going to bring this entire thing back around to trivia right now, but you know what? I don't hate doing, right? Because laundry I hate, this I don't hate. Giving away free money. $1,000 to be exact. You have to answer 10 questions correctly to get it. If you miss one, you will no longer be eligible for the cash, but you will be eligible to hear more about whatever topic I feel like going off on, which usually depends on the trivia question. Something else that's become a little dependent is your ability to claim your trivia winnings. So folks, you gotta have a completed profile, avatar and all to cash out. Make sure you are posting that original content too, okay? Now, if you need inspiration, we've got our new pre-show happening at 7.30 p.m. Eastern each weeknight, right before trivia, and we're showing off our favorite creators, plus we're talking about challenges that you can get involved in, more ways to earn. Sound good? Cool. It's time for display trivia. Question one. Which of the following is not a command you teach a dog in obedience school? Sit, heel, chew shoes. Which of the following is not a command you teach a dog in obedience school? Sit, heel, chew shoes. All right, sweetie, here's your lunch box. It's just kibbles and bits again. Those are your favorite. And don't forget your leash. Good luck on your first day in obedience school. Oh, it seems like yesterday he was uh, just a puppy. Man, those dogs, they grow up so fast. In fact, seven times faster than we do. So, you know, get all those slobbery kisses and tail wags that you can. And who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? That would be all of you displaybies who are looking absolutely fetching tonight. Paw. Question two. In Megan Trainor's debut single, she claimed to be all about what musical element? Treble, bass, meter. In Megan Trainor's debut single, she claimed to be all about what musical element? Treble, bass, meter. Yes, in this song, she is particularly obsessed with a specific part of the music, but after a few listens to this song, you know what? I think uh, it might be an innuendo. Mm-hmm. But an innuendo for what, you might ask? I think I got it. I do. Look, Meg might not be a pirate, but she is proud of that booty. Good for you, girl. And thanks for helping us all shake a tail feather back in 2014 when this song peaked. Meg Trainer was and probably still is all about that bass. Cut the treble. You hear? Question three. Hound's tooth is a pattern that can also be referred to as all of the following except dog tooth, pied de poule, plaid. Hound's tooth is a pattern that can also be referred to as all of the following except dog tooth, pied de poule, plaid. You might see this pattern making up a lot of tweed suits and caps. Oh, and capes but not the kind that superheroes wear. No, definitely not those. More so the kind worn by English noblemen hunting in the countryside and smoking out of old tiny pipes while stroking their teeny tiny mustaches. Why, it's elementary, my good sirs. Watson, is that you? Go back to beating humans at Jeopardy, you clown. Houndstooth is the iconic duotone, duo to, duotone print. Duo tone print, you try saying that. Hound's tooth is the iconic duo tone print that doesn't have to be, but normally is black and white. No gray area here though, plaid. Plaid is your answer. 
Question four. Australian children's musicians, the Wiggles, describe fruit salad as what? Yummy, yummy, icky, icky, hefty, hefty, hefty. Australian children's musicians, the Wiggles, describe fruit salad as what? Yummy, yummy, icky, icky, hefty, hefty, hefty. The Wiggles were not men of many words. They were more along the lines of cut the BS and get to the point kind of guys. Very direct, which personally, I love in a man. Love it. Say what you mean. And um, honestly, way better than the Teletubbies who never said what they were thinking. And they were always flirting with that baby in the sky. I mean, do I even need to unpack all of that? Not okay for a number of reasons. Look, while Lala, Tinky Winky, Dipsy, and Poe get their issues straightened out, I'll stick with the dudes from Down Under. We just wanted to show all the kids out there that fruit salad, a healthy and simple snack, was yummy, yummy. Plain and simple. Question five. Which of the following superlatives is true of the Himalayan mountains? They're the oldest in the world. They're the tallest in the world. They're the longest in the world. Which of these superlatives is true of the Himalayan mountains? They're the oldest in the world. They're the tallest in the world. They're the longest in the world. Also, fun fact about the Himalayas, they're the best place in the world to source pink salt lamps. Where would therapist's office, yoga studios, and influencer bathrooms be without them? You know the ones, right? They're essentially just a big chunk of salt someone put an incandescent light bulb inside of that emits a supposedly healing soft pink glow. And for $39.99, they better work. They better work. I'm only stressed out now because I just spent $40 on a lamp that I, d I didn't need. Oh, but look how it comes out in photos. Okay, okay, I, I'm calm. The Himalayas, as far as mountain ranges go, are actually quite new, at about 50 million years old. But what they make, but what they lack in experience, they make up for in verticality. Yes, height. Sounds like a good deal. Question six. Coal was a substance used in ancient Egypt as what? Mummification agent, hieroglyphic ink, eyeliner. Coal was a substance used in ancient Egypt as what? Mummification agent, hieroglyphic ink, eyeliner. I'm not sure about coal in ancient Egypt. I know the Egyptians did a lot of mummification and note taking and makeup wearing, but what was coal? In modern times, the more you know, the more you coals. What, they got great deals for the whole family and you know it. Look, I got an espresso and matching pajama sets for everyone, including the dog, and I only use the coals cash that's been in the bottom of my mom's purse for three years? <laughs> Sick dude. In ancient Egypt and many other cultures, coal was a substance made from ground up lead used as a cosmetic and was often a symbol of nobility. Lead based paint around the eyes? Mm, get those mummification tools ready, I think. Question seven. The artist known for his pop prints of Campbell's Soup Cans is from what US city? Manhattan, Pittsburgh, Cleveland. The artist known for his pop prints of Campbell's soup cans is from what U.S. city? Manhattan, Pittsburgh, Cleveland. Who knew giant soup cans painted in different colors could be considered art, but there you have it. What's next? Slapping a toilet down in a gallery and calling that art? Oh, someone did that. Oh, okay. Well, I bet no one has just sat in a room as people wait in line all day to sit across from her and stare into her eyes and call that art. Oh, someone did that too. Wait, okay, I think I'm getting this. So art can be anything, as long as you call it art. All right, I'm starting to get the hang of this. I don't know, maybe hosting trivia can be considered art? What do we think? Well, this artist is Andy Warhol and his place of birth, Pittsburgh, PA. Question eight. The word for a hut made of snow and ice comes from what language? Inuit, Sami, Yupik. The word for a hut made of snow and ice comes from what language? Inuit, Sami, Yupik. Look, I'm not so sure I buy into the whole hut made of snow and ice thing, really. Like sure, it's a great photo op, but that can't possibly actually be keeping anyone insulated from freezing temps, right? Oh wait, snow is actually an amazing insulator against the cold, but snow is cold. That's like trying to dry yourself off by standing under a shower head, no? No, no. Because the air trapped in the snow actually keeps whatever is inside the igloo, there's the word, nice and warm. Two wrongs make a right, I guess. And the word igloo comes from Inuit for house. 
How about them apples? Question nine. The university attended by the star of Notting Hill and Bridget Jones' diary can be a descriptor of all of the following except a punctuation mark, a card game, a collared shirt. That university can be a descriptor of all of the following except a punctuation mark, a card game, a collared shirt. Not quite looking for a monarch here. However, this man is the king of English rom-coms, or as they call them in England, romantic comedies, my good boy. I'm channeling a lot of old Englishmen today. Sorry, y'all. I'm just finally getting caught up on the crown. I know, I know, I'm a little late to the banquet here. No spoilers, please. Okay, just one. What does Diana wear when she's crowned queen? No, don't, don't tell me. Okay. The English film actor we're referencing here is Mr. Hugh Grant, who pursued a literature degree at Oxford University before making it big in Hollywood. And Oxford lends its name to the famous comma and a type of dress shirt. But no dice if you pick the card game. It's time for the final question. Q10. In the tabular display of elements originally outlined in 1869, the letter H appears how many times in the chart's current official abbreviations? Five, six, 10. The letter H appears how many times in the chart's current official abbreviations? Five, six, 10. If you're into tabular displays, and I know most of you are, you're probably a huge fan of this one. One of the best known tabular displays I can think of. Also, maybe the only tabular display I can think of. Wait, does the color wheel count? If so, I think that I picked that one. Oh, in elementary school art class, I could stare at that thing all day. The fact that red and blue make purple, I am still not over it. You probably saw this tabular display in school though, or maybe on a shower curtain in the Big Bang Theory. It's the periodic table of elements. And although only five element names start with an H and six abbreviations start with it, hello Mercury, didn't see you there. There are H's in, count them up, 10. Woo! Not gonna lie, that was as hard for me as it was for you. Y'all, I am going to need a few days <laughs> to recuperate. So thank goodness for the weekend. T-G-F-T-W. Winners, well done, you are incredible. I wanna remind all of you that there are some challenges for you to take part in that are happening right here on display and I'm reposting my favorites, which means more eyeballs on your content, which means more money in your display bank account. Come back for our pre-show on Monday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern to find out more about that and I look forward to seeing what you create, get creative. In the meantime, get those display profiles filled out so you can claim your trivia winnings and post some great content. Also have a great weekend, lots of great, so much great. I'll see you Monday, bye.